everyone, it's Alice and today I thought I would share with you my autumn TBR. My reading this year has gone quite slowly so far, at least compared to previous years, but I just can't help myself. I always end up making really ambitious TBRs and we're just gonna have to see how it goes. This time of year is by far my favorite though, so who knows, maybe I will read loads over the next couple of months. Anyways, first up we have got a book that I meant to read last year and then I didn't get around to it, which does happen to me a lot, but this is one of those books that I feel like I need to read during the right part of the year, so I've saved it until now. It's The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers by Jen Campbell. This is a short story collection and it's basically filled with fairy tales from all over the world, but they've all been rewritten and sort of reworked to be a little bit more contemporary and more inclusive, which sounds very interesting and I'm all for it. It's also illustrated, so some of the pages have like full illustrations and then some of them are like this where they have some artwork around the text and it just looks like a beautiful book. I love any kind of like dark fairy tale, so I feel like this is gonna be a great book to just like curl up with one evening. Secondly, we have got a book that I got very recently actually, but I'm just very intrigued to read it. It's Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Dyrchenko. And this is actually a translated book. It's translated from Ukrainian, which is pretty cool. And it sounds weird, but good. The story is about this young woman who is away on like summer vacation with her mother, I think. And she somehow comes into contact with this quite odd man who becomes some sort of mentor to her and at the end of summer he encourages her to move to this remote village and attend something that's called like the Institute for Special Technologies. Now this is a fantasy novel, it's urban fantasy as far as I can tell and so I'm assuming that there's a lot of weird stuff going on at the school. It says that like the books are almost impossible to read, the lessons are really obscure, and whoever is running this institute is like making the students live in fear and terror, so I guess that's how they sort of keep them in line. And it doesn't sound great, but apparently our main character really finds her place there and I'm sure she'll learn some cool stuff I don't really know what any of it means, but it sounds very interesting. And I also think it's cool to read some translated fantasy because I don't think I've read a lot of it. Then I want to try and get to this quite chunky novel. It's The Likeness by Tana French. And this is actually the second book in the Dublin Murder Squad series, I think it's called. And I read the first book years and years ago. I don't remember a whole lot from it, but I do remember that I liked it. It's just been so long, but Everyone keeps telling me that I'm gonna like this book, so I gotta give it a go. We follow one of the same detectives in this book that we met in the first book, I think. I feel like I can remember her from the first book. And she starts investigating this case of basically the murder of her doppelganger, who looks exactly like her, and for some reason is carrying an idea that has a name that this detective used undercover years ago. So it's all very weird. And I think what happens is that they send in the detective to sort of go undercover again to try and like get the murderer to come out because they don't have any leads, which sounds dangerous but also very thrilling. I am a little intimidated by the size of this, I'm not gonna lie. It's almost 700 pages like 693 or something, but the text is not that small. And so even though this is a very chunky book, I do feel like I should be able to make my way through it fairly quickly. Next, we have got some more urban fantasy with Middle Game by Sean McGuire. And this is a book I've been meaning to read for years and I just need to do it. I love this cover. It's a little unsettling and I'm thinking maybe the book will be too. It's about these twins, one of which has a real skill for language and the other one is obsessed with numbers and math and they're described as like not quite human, although I don't really know what that means. And I think we follow them and their creator who I guess is like an alchemist or something and maybe this person has like made the twins. I don't really know, but whoever they are, they're trying to like make these twins into some sort of gods. It sounds very strange, and I know it's one of those books that not everyone gets along with, but I just wanna try it and see what I think. It does sound like 
quite the story. Then we've got some more short stories with Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan. And this is a collection of dark and fairy tale esque stories and it's always really hard to summarize short story collections, I feel, and to be honest, I haven't looked that much into this because I've read several books by this author and I really like her writing style. So I just got this book and I'm assuming that I'm gonna like it. I really like her style, like it's usually a little weird and strange and you don't quite know what's going on. And usually her stories focus on women, so I just feel like it ticks a lot of boxes for me and I'm sure it's gonna be good. Next, we have got a classic that I will be trying to read in October. It's Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. And this is one of those books that like, obviously you have to read around Halloween, or I guess you don't have to, but I want to read it when the season is appropriate. This is a Poirot mystery, and it's about this teenager who boasts at a party that she once witnessed a murder, but no one really believes her, and so she storms off and is later found dead. I'm assuming Poirot is around somehow at this point, and so he's called in to investigate and try to figure out how everything fits together, and I'm sure it'll be very clever and interesting. I love Poirot, it's one of my favorite series, and so I'm sure this will be very enjoyable. Then we have got some literary fiction and this lovely autumnal cover. This is The Headmaster's Wife by Thomas Christopher Green, and I believe it follows a man who is the headmaster of this elite school in Vermont and it's like his favorite place to be, it's where his whole life is, but it's also where his undoing begins. I think what happens is that this headmaster is found wandering around campus naked and the police pick him up and start talking to him and he starts telling them the story of his life, but it's a little bit difficult to understand and a little incoherent, but He's telling them about a life of love and tragedy and grief. And it says that this book is like part mystery, part love story, and part exploration of family. And all of that sounds very interesting. Plus, I do love a good boarding school setting. Then I've got a book that I've had on my autumn TBR for the past like two or three years. And I know, I know, I just need to read it. It's If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. And I think the thing with this book is, it's just one of those books that I'm sure I'm going to like and I might even love it. And because of that, I don't feel a rush to get to it for some reason. Like sometimes with those kinds of books, you just end up putting them off. And I know a lot of people do this and I do it as well. But when I do get to those books, I always wonder why I've put it off for so long because I end up loving it. The story sounds amazing. It's about this man who is released from prison after having served 10 years for murder, and on the day he is released, there is someone waiting for him, the detective who put him away, and he wants to know what really happened back then. I guess they start talking about it and we go back to whenever this happened like 10 years ago and we meet this group of seven students who are at this elite college and they're studying Shakespeare and I'm assuming someone gets murdered and it just, it sounds amazing. I love when stories are structured like this and I love a good university setting and it just, it takes literally all of the boxes for me so I just need to read it. Next we have got some horror, which I don't read a lot of, but I do like a little bit of it every once in a while. We've got House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, and this is about this 17 year old girl who has always been quite strange, and I think her and her sisters experienced something like a while ago that none of them can really remember, but it's left them scarred and different somehow. Then I think one of the sisters goes missing and this girl that we're following, she starts seeing all of these strange things, like these horned men are following her around, a corpse comes out of the ceiling. <laughs> like It sounds absolutely insane and kind of creepy but very interesting. I do think this sort of veers into the supernatural, which I think is pretty cool, and hopefully it won't be too scary for me. <laughs> Second to last, we have got Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, which is historical fiction horror, and it's about this, I 
think quite young girl, like late teens, early 20s, who goes to visit her cousin in the Mexican countryside because she's gotten a letter from her asking for help. And so I guess she goes there to try and help. It seems like the house that they're in is kind of like weird and then this main character that we're following has to delve into this family to try and help her cousin with whatever problem she has, I guess. And there are all of these secrets and it just sounds intriguing. It's also quite a popular book and it's one of those books that I just want to read and find out what I think of it. Lastly, we of course need a witch book, so we've got The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. And this is historical fiction, it's set in the 17th century in the small English village, and the village is basically gripped by the witch trial panic, and so it's about the witch trials and everything that comes with that. I think this mysterious, pious man comes to town and starts asking questions about the women in the town and is trying to find witches, I guess. And we follow this woman who is sort of on the outskirts of society, which puts her right in the middle of suspicion of being a witch. I think it sounds very interesting. I do love a good historical novel and I love any story about witches, whether they're sort of real or not. Those were all the books that I have in my TBR stack though. Now if there are any of these books that you'd like to see in like reading vlogs or anything like that, do let me know because I'm gonna try to make some like cozy autumnal vlogs because those are my favorite both to watch and to make. So if there are any books you're particularly interested in, do let me know. As always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye!